growing up as a young boy in Pakistan, I used to dream about coming to America. And I wanted to be a rock star. I would dream about coming to America, putting Elvis Presley out of business, and running away with Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> and I had that dream for many, many years. But as I started to grow older, and that dream, it seemed like that that may not be coming true, I then took my dad's advice, and I went to engineering school, and I became a structural engineer. And now looking back, you know, 50 years, it didn't take me very long to recognize the power of that profession. Not only just the power of being a structural engineer, but just the power of what we as professionals do for humanity. You don't have to look very far. Any metropolitan city you go to, all of these wonderful buildings that create the economy on which we depend are only there because people like you were involved. I, I even proceed to say that every monument that's a testimony to the grandeur of mankind is standing today because professionals like you did something at some point in life. You are in the, it is because of you that we even have an economy. You are created to make the life of another human being better. That is the one and foremost reason that a human being is created. And you as a profession, you make the lives of humanity better on a daily basis. That is the power of your profession. I tell the structural engineers that, you know, if you played your card right, cards right, every structure that is built right under the name of the structure should be this big round logo that says structural engineering inside. <laughs> I mean, we can compromise, okay, let's call it architectural engineering or engineering architecture. I mean, you guys do do some stuff. <laughs> and you MEP guys can work with the architect to figure what they want, but let's face it, you know, I mean, uh, you know, in all honesty, I mean, the shit that you guys dream up, <laughs> pardon the word, but, we have no HR here. <laughs> so, I mean, the, really, the stuff that you guys dream up, it will come crashing down if it weren't for the structural engineers. All of you guys would be in jail. <laughs> and how much would you pay a structural engineer? How much would you pay anybody that, would will, that is willing to keep you out of jail if you know for sure you're going to jail? You would give them everything you own. Structural engineers are in the business of saving lives. A doctor becomes a hero by saving one life. You know, I say structural engineers save lives every time the wind blows. So I did this seminar in New York City where some kid flew out. She flew out from Argentina to attend the seminar. And to this day, it makes me cry. It really makes me cry. So she went back, and she wrote me this note. She says, I've been working at this company for four years. Today is the first day I went to work with a renewed sense of passion and appreciation associated with the work that I do because of you. Now my question becomes, what have we achieved as educators if we've taught us structural dynamics, mechanics of materials, theory of structures, all this high-powered technology? but we have failed to instill in her 
a sense of value and passion associated with what she does. We have completely failed. And belief is such an important thing. First of all, it's important to have belief. You need to have beliefs. What do you really believe in? Is this work something that's worthy of doing because it is completely changing how humanity operates? Yes. Is that your belief? You know, if you, you guys create the infrastructure of humanity, you know, if the infrastructure collapsed, like your piping, your piping don't work no more, your electricity is gone, an earthquake comes and the whole structure falls down. This is all hap not happening because something you guys did. Would there be peace? There would be riots in the streets. Because of the infrastructure collapsing due to an earthquake, there will be no food. People will be eating each other. Talk about no lack of peace, complete anarchy. So then how come Obama got the peace prize and you didn't? The Nobel Peace Prize went to Obama. You guys do all this stuff. This is taken for granted. That if you guys didn't do it, there would be no peace. Something to think about. And it's all because we don't have public relations going out there and making the public realize what we do mainstreaming our profession, talking about it so it becomes glamorous.